Still at it, WTBC's top 30 survey, uh, dated July 18th, 1973. <clears throat> Song coming in at number four, down from number two, There's Got to Be a Morning After by Marie McGovern. This, this, gosh, dog, it still hits the spot. This woman had an amazing voice. She only had about two, three hit records. Another song that I liked by her was... Uh, Oh, what was the other one she did? Different Worlds, back in the fall of 1979. It was from an obscure television show that lasted for one season. The song itself got into the top 20, and more of an up-tempo record than The Morning After. I just, just got a voice of an angel. God, an angel up above coming down to give you a little bit of comfort, give, give you a little bit of solace. Uh, uh, just, well, there's got to be a morning after. Everything's going to be all right. Because there's a morning after. Sun's going to come up. After the darkest of the night. <laughs> Marie McGovern. The song from The Poseiding Adventure. And the movie The Poseiding Adventure. The song was uh, written back in March of 1972. Two 20th Century Fox songwriters. Their names was Al Kasha and Joe Hirsch. I believe it's Hirschhorn. I believe I pronounced his last name correctly, not sure. They were asked to write the song in one night. They needed they needed the song the next day. The record company or the studio or whoever, they needed the song fast. They wrote it in one night, and it was originally called Why Must There Be a Morning After? And the record company was like, well, that's a little too pessimistic. Let's change that a little bit for the movie. Let's call it something a little bit more upbeat, like there's got to be a morning after or just the morning after. The song was performed by a character named Nani. It was performed two times by the character Nani in the film, although the song itself was it was sung by a focal double. Her name was Renee Arman. And uh, Russ Riggin. Well, the movie got really big. When the movie got really big, Russ Riggin, who was the manager of 20th Century Records, he wanted to put out a commercial version of The Morning After. He was mulling over a demonstration tape that was sent to him, sent to him by a secretary and part-time folk singer. Her name, Maureen McGovern. He liked what he heard. He said, man, she just, she's killing it. I want I want to I want her to do the commercial version of the morning after the single release. She's got to do it. Russ Reagan contacted Maureen McGovern. He signed her to his label, 20th Century. 20th Century Fox, I believe. And he produced it. No, he he not only, well he didn't produce it, but he financed it. Out of his own pocket. That's how much he believed in her. He must have been in love. He must have fell in love with her voice like everybody else did when the record came out. It was recorded in Cleveland, Ohio. The studio, Agency Record Stu Agency Recording Studio in Cleveland, Ohio. That's where the song was recorded at. Released, went to number one. Billboard's Hot 100. My goodness. Here it is. The Morning After by Maureen McGovern. Number four. WTBC survey of July 18th, 1973.